rotational inertia. This time we're going to use the parallel axis theorem to find the rotational inertia in several situations. First of all, you have to know the uh, rotational inertia around the axis through the center of mass. So we're going to do the same three situations I did in the last video. And uh, that's a rod, a thin uniform rod, rotating about the y-axis. And we're going to start out with the uh, y-axis going through the center of mass of the object. And I'm just going to give you that uh, moment of inertia. It's 1 12th ml squared. If you know calculus, you can uh, solve it. I did it in the last um, video. And if you don't use calculus, then you can uh, look it up in your textbook. Every uh, textbook has a table of objects with uh, the moments of inertia associated with them. So look it up. And so this is our given state. Now we want to find the moment of inertia through the end point with the, sorry, with the y-axis at the end point of the rod. Okay, so in the interest of time, I have uh, drawn this uh, already. And uh, this is the situation. The rod is rotating about the y-axis. The y-axis goes through the end point of the rod. So here's our parallel axis theorem. It says that the moment of inertia around some axis that's parallel to the one through the center of mass is going to be the moment of inertia of that one through the center of mass plus the mass of the object times d squared. And d is the distance from the axis of rotation to the axis through the center of mass. And those two axes must be parallel to each other. So here's the one through the center of mass. I'm just going to use a dashed line here because the center of mass of our rod is right in the middle. So I'm going to just call that the center of mass rotational axis. And the y-axis is our new axis. So d then would be that distance right there, l over 2 in our case. So let's plug in some numbers here. The center of mass rotational inertia is 1 12th ml squared. And we are going to add to that m times d squared. And we just said d was l over 2. So l over 2 squared. And what do we get? We get 1 12th ml squared plus 1 4th ml squared and you add those together and you get one-third ml squared. And some textbooks also will have a picture of this listed in their table, so you can check it against that, make sure we got it right. Uh, we also did this using calculus in the previous video, and we got one-third ml squared. Okay, so I've drawn my picture for the third example. We've got our rod located between x equals a and x equals a plus l. And it's rotating about the y-axis. So our center of mass, that's the center of mass axis. And our y-axis is the new axis of rotation. So this distance here is d, the distance between the axis through the center of mass and the axis we're interested in. And our i, our new moment of inertia, is going to be i center of mass plus m d squared. The rotational inertia through the center of mass axis of rotation is 1 12th ml squared. That's either fairly easy to calculate or it's easy to look up in a table, one or the other. That's why we use the parallel axis theorem plus m d squared, and d is a plus l over 2. And you do a little bit of algebra here, and you end up with 1 third ml squared plus a squared m plus a m l, which is exactly what we got in the previous video when we just used our calculus to find it directly. So in this case, it wasn't too bad to do it directly, but there are other cases that it gets really ugly. I'll give you a quick example here. If you're trying to find the, uh, the moment of inertia of a disk, 
and the axis of rotation, this is a solid disk, let's say, and let's make the axis of rotation uh, perpendicular to the page going through the center, that is a, a fairly easy integral to set up. It's a, it's a double integral, right? You're integrating over area. It's a two, uh, a double integral, but it's, it's fairly easy to do if with a little calculus. But let's say we move, we move this disk over. So this is case one. Now we want to do this situation where the axis of rotation is not through the center of our solid disk, but it's over here. This is not an easy integral to do, uh, very diff tricky. So the parallel axis theorem you can see comes in very handy. You can set up an easy integral or look up uh, what the rotational inertia is of this disk rotating about its center point and then use the parallel axis theorem to quickly figure out what it would be if it was rotating about the end point. So here the disk would be rotating, you know, something like that. much trickier to do the integral in case two here. You, the parallel axis theorem really comes in handy in situations like this.